So I'm always fascinated in these voter panels that CNN does because I think it really does give you some good insight into what some voters are thinking. Now, it's just anecdotal evidence. It may not necessarily be as useful as aggregate polling data, but nonetheless, I do find these fascinating. Although this one here that I have up on the screen, it's a poll of... Iowa voters, some of which support Joe Biden, some of which support Donald Trump. And I wanted to talk about this, but I can't just do a traditional segment because I'm going to need to pause this like multiple times because there's so much to respond to here that it's just, it's mind blowing. <laughs> so with that being said, let's listen. How many of you, just raise your hand, are considering voting for Donald Trump? Uh, Four. And how many of you are considering voting for Joe Biden? For these 10 voters in Des Moines, Iowa, campaign season is already in full swing. Republican Frank Moran voted for Trump in 2016 and plans to again. The economy is booming where I, I just feel as though everything that I've been wanting to have done is being done. Heather, why do you? Okay, let's just stop right there. The economy is booming. So you hear all this news about the stock markets and um simultaneously wages aren't increasing wages aren't increasing normal americans aren't doing any better since trump was elected so to use the economy that just tells me that this individual he just he doesn't read past the headlines the economies have improved in a number of countries in europe and elsewhere it's a global trend so to credit Trump, I mean, here's the thing that people don't get is that presidents have not very much control over the economy. They can steer it to an extent. But with that being said, the economy isn't good because of Donald Trump. And when you look at the effect of Donald Trump's tax cuts, that helped rich people. It just gave rich people more money. So what are you talking about? Unless this guy is a billionaire or a millionaire, I don't get what he's talking about. But let's continue. Donald Trump. He's working on border control, which I think is really important. This Why is border control important? How are you personally affected by immigration? How has that affected you personally? I mean, for people who make immigration their number one issue, I can't help but think you're just a useful idiot. The ruling class is trying to distract you desperately from them rigging the economy and they're getting you to turn your attention to people who have no money and no power whatsoever. So congratulations because you've been duped and you don't even get it. Like immigration is so important. He's doing so much about immigration. I mean, come on. This is not a real issue. It's not a real issue. How do you not see that you've been played? And I just ripped out my ear uh, earbud. <laughs> but let's continue. A lifelong independent voter is also supporting Trump. I vote for somebody who's going to protect and defend the Constitution. And protect and defend the Constitution. How incredibly ignorant is that? How incredibly ignorant is that? He's in violation of the emoluments clause. He's breaking the law. There were 10 instances of obstruction of justice in Mueller's report. You think this guy cares about the Constitution? or law and order. There's a number of anti-BDS laws. Trump hasn't said anything about that. Trump gutted the Johnson Amendment, which allows religious organizations to engage in political activity. That is obviously a violation of the First Amendment, and it violates the principle of the separation of church and state. But because Trump says, I support the Constitution, this guy just says, oh, well, he says it, so that must suffice. You've got to go beyond the rhetoric and look at what he's doing. You have to look at what he's doing. He bombed Syria. Did he get Congress's approval for that the first time or the second time? He increased the drone wars by 432%. Did he get Congress's approval for that? Waging in war unilaterally without Congress's approval is an explicit violation of the Constitution. But I mean, Trump says, I love the Constitution. So they take him at his word. They take him at face value. And it's just, it's frustrating because these people are misinformed. So as an independent, you're not considering voting Republican at all? Oh, no, no. 
Of the Democrats and independents in this group, only one is already sold on Joe Biden, despite his front-runner status. He can do a good job of bringing the country together. If we can move past rhetoric and we can uh, bring someone who's more respected worldwide, I think we can have a better country from that. I what does that even mean? He can bring the country together. He was the vice president for eight years. Are we any more united? Were we any more united back then? I mean, you say you have to go past the rhetoric. So if you go past the rhetoric, you'll see that Joe Biden isn't about bringing anyone together. He's about essentially doing what right wingers want. He's essentially a Republican. So I don't even know what that means. I've heard other voters in these types of panels say that too. Oh, you know, Joe Biden wants to bring people together. Why? Because he says he's going to bring people together. What does that even mean? Here's the thing. If you get in someone who is not Trump, but is very much responsible for creating the grim conditions that ultimately facilitated the rise of a demagogue like Donald Trump, I've got bad news for you. You're going to get another Trump in four to eight years, who's probably going to be worse than Donald Trump. So when you say, and look, this is a young person, so I don't want to shit on this person. I'm just glad that he's participating in politics and voting. But when you say he wants to bring people together, really think deeply about that and ask yourself, what does that even mean? Because he's not going to be as divisive as Donald Trump. There's other candidates. Every single candidate is not going to be as divisive as Donald Trump in the Democratic Party primary. None of them. Even the most corporate Democrat, of course, they're not going to be as divisive. They'll be more polite. But ask yourself, what change with regard to policy will be different? And if you want to bring people together, wouldn't it make more sense to implement policies that are universal policies that are largely popular, like Medicare for all? Raising the minimum wage? I just, I don't think these people thought very long and hard about their positions not as big a fan of Joe Biden. Uh, I would probably say I support uh, Pete Buttigieg. Ah! No! See, he gave me hope. He's like, okay, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. And then he goes to Buttigieg. What about Buttigieg do you like? Name one policy that you think sets him apart from the rest of the field. What is he proposing? What's he running on? You don't know because he's not running on anything. It's all about platitudes, cliches, and just... I'm a wonk. Vote for me. And then you'll get the policies later. Why? What's really bothered me about Joe Biden is the way that he has responded to the allegations by women. Some men in yeah, the group are turned sense. off by the same issue. I didn't like his, his idea that, okay, it's okay to just go up to a woman and smell her hair and say, oh, I mean, who, come on, who did that? Exactly. Okay. This is kind of a bright spot in this because I don't get how more people aren't bothered by this. Like, it was a scandal for like a week and then it just was largely swept under the rug. But if you're a Democratic Party voter, I thought that you said you cared about misogyny. I thought that you said you were outraged at the way in which Donald Trump treats women and his misogyny. But for Joe Biden, he gets a pass? Really? I mean, to me, as someone who absolutely demands my personal space be respected. When I see these videos of Joe Biden whispering in the ears of women and little girls, it makes me cringe. It makes me fucking cringe. And he clearly hasn't learned his lesson because he was doing this again to a 10 year old girl like last week. Am I saying that he's a pedophile or a sexual predator? No, but he doesn't know how to respect boundaries. He's incapable of it. And then he minimizes it and makes a joke out of it when, you know, um, he's called out. It's just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Republican voter Haley Ledford will be voting in her first presidential election and plans to support Trump for now. Would you ever consider not voting for Donald Trump given some of the things that he has said about women or his attitude towards women? Um, if there was a Republican candidate who represented my personal morals and beliefs, yeah, I would choose them over Donald Trump if they were a strong candidate. Okay, so what that tells me, she kind of just gave it away and revealed all of her cards here. Morals and beliefs. Whenever a Republican says that, that's code for, I am pro-life, quote unquote, pro-life, and I'm against LGBTQ rights and trans rights. I mean, I'm assuming, right? 
But mostly, if I had to guess, I'd say that abortion is her number one issue. Well, look, I'm glad that you probably self-describe as pro-life. So let me ask you this. I hope you're outraged at the fact that Donald Trump is giving Saudi Arabia the bombs that they're using to commit genocide in Yemen. They're dropping bombs on school buses in Yemen. So if you're pro-life, this is something that should concern you. You should be calling this out. You should be calling this out every single day at the top of your lungs. But a lot of pro-life people support Donald Trump. Turn a blind eye to all of the warmongering that he's doing. The very first raid that he greenlit when he became president in Yemen ended up resulting in the death of an American girl. An American girl. Nawar al-Awlaki. I don't ever hear any of these pro-life people speaking out against that. They're just one-dimensional, one-trick ponies who are duped by Republicans by this one-wedge issue. People realize they hired a, uh, a wealthy guy that's common to have a supermodel on his arm. That's his lifestyle. That's, in, that's actually irrelevant. It's about how they're going to defend our Constitution. Okay, I get that if you want to overlook Donald Trump's misogyny and just dumb fuckery in general because you think his policies are good, but then you pivot back to, oh, well, he wants to defend the Constitution. You haven't demonstrated sufficiently how he's defending the Constitution. How is he defending the Constitution? I'm assuming he'd say, oh, well, Second Amendment. Okay, that's one amendment. There's quite a bit of amendments. I mean, he's not defending the First Amendment. It just, ah, uh, this is soul crushing. <laughs> I'm yelling, I'm sorry. Bend our borders and our sovereignty and tell us the truth, even if it's rough, laced with cuss words. We don't want the political correct message. We want the truth. We don't need the smoke blowing up our skirt. I, I don't know how you can possibly paint that broad of rush and just say not only are Republicans, but just Americans are pleased with who we have. As a woman, it is frustrating, depressing, and frightening to hear people just brush aside the misogynistic things that Donald Trump has done. She likes I'd Pete imagine. Buttigieg. Ah! Yeah, I think he's See, I started to like her and then fucking... Hiring. He has a message that can... Um, restore the unity that we're looking for. I think as a veteran too, he would um, he would represent us well um, across the world. This day what? Uh, it's like, this is why this video is so soul crushing. Somebody will say something that you like and you'll be like, okay, a reasonable person. And they'll say, why well, like Pete Buttigieg? Why do you like Pete Buttigieg? What is it about him? Oh, he has a unifying message and he is a veteran so he can represent us around the world. Really? Because if you buy into that, you'd have to accept that other countries around the world are 100% okay with U.S. imperialism. I don't know that, that they would agree with that. I just feel like him being a veteran is a non-issue. It's not a plus or a minus. It's just, it's irrelevant. It's not germane to your qualification as a presidential candidate. It makes no sense. Let's continue here and see what this lady says. Credit voter likes Elizabeth Warren. She's smart. She gets things done. I also like the fact that she's not a middle-aged white guy. <laughs> so she was kind of iffy about voting for Joe Biden at first. And then she says, well, I like Elizabeth Warren. She's smart. She gets things done. And she's not a middle-aged white guy. So you're voting like exclusively on the basis of identity? Don't you think that's a really privileged position to take? I mean, if you objectively believe that Elizabeth Warren is the better candidate, then fine. But to exclusively vote on the basis of identity, I mean, would you have supported John McCain back in 2008 over Barack Obama because he chose Sarah Palin as a running mate? Would you support Carly Fiorina over a Democrat because she's a woman? I mean, think about this. The difference between someone like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren is that he supports Medicare for all. She's running away from that. When you think about all of the healthcare disparities when it comes to trans rights, LGBTQ rights, women's healthcare disparities, to vote exclusively on the basis of identity, I mean, it makes sense that you want representation. I think we all want to increase representation because if women represent 50% of the population, then it only makes sense that 
50% of Congress is occupied by women. That should reflect society. At the same time, substantive representation, doing what will benefit women is more important than just getting women in Congress. Descriptive representation versus substantive representation. They're both important, but at the end of the day, what matters is policy, not the identity. While many in this group have a long way to go in deciding, those supporting Trump are dug in. Heather, does um, it bother you that the president lies? I think a little, yeah. I mean, yes, it does. But, but that um, doesn't make you want to vote for it. It doesn't. Or it doesn't change my vote for him. And Randy joins me now. So, <laughs> so I'm going to stop that there. Um, this just hurt my fucking brain. Um, it just hurt my brain. I'm not surprised that the Trump supporters are, you know, they've already decided. But when it comes to Democratic Party voter voters, I mean, what are we doing, guys? What are we doing? Really take a step back and look at what led to Donald Trump. You had mass disenfranchisement with the establishment. People just feeling depressed and disenchanted with the political system. That catalyzed the rise of a demagogue who exploited their concerns. Don't you think that we should get someone who is the antithesis of Donald Trump, who can actually undo some of the things that facilitated the rise of Trump in the first place? Look, it's why the title of this video um, seems so, um, I don't want to say hyperbolic, but <laughs> it's soul crushing, right? Because it's like, you think that people get it. You think that people get it. We have a reality television star as our president. That is absolutely a sign that we need to step back and reevaluate what we've been doing. But apparently people aren't willing to do that. Okay. But um, if you opt for another corporate Democrat like Pete Buttigieg or Joe Biden, well, we just tested out how well a corporate Democrat fares against Donald Trump in 2016. If you, if you want to try that again, have at it. But don't complain then if we get another Supreme Court appointee by Donald Trump. That will be devastating. But I mean, we're kind of fucking ourselves over, guys, by continuously allowing these corporate Democrats to rise to the top of the crop when they should be ashamed and ostracized and marginalized in this primary. They should be getting zero pull whatsoever. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.